First of all, I want to tell you, thank you all for coming. Um, we really appreciate you being here. This is, we're all new technology. We're videotaping, we're PowerPointing and all the above. So if we have some glitches, please be patient with us. Mm -hmm. I very seldom get to introduce this lady. She, <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, what she's going to show you this morning is the reason why we have such a successful program in Olympia. It has nothing to do with the callers. We just show up and teach. This lady is the lady that makes it happen. I'm really proud of what she's been doing. Give her a great big hand, my wife, Nancy. <laughs> Okay, so as people are coming in a little late, I thought I'd just show you a quick video. Let me tell you about Olympia. 2011, we were right where some of you are telling me you are now. We have a beautiful hall. We could barely pay the taxes and the electricity, et cetera. The clubs were dancing three or four squares. It was a good dance. Several of the clubs there were talking about folding. We just didn't know what we were going to do. We all got together, had a big meeting. Um, I hadn't been very involved in square dancing. Well, I, I've been square dancing a lot for 40 some years, but I hadn't been involved with lessons that much at that point in time, but I was an empty nester. And at this meeting, Jim Hattrick um, said, you know, we do something down there in Vancouver where we do a lot of starts. So it isn't just once a year where people can start and then they drop out and you never see them again. Um, so we said, okay, we'll try it. Uh, our other callers, Glenn and Don Wood, were a little skeptical, but the, we all committed to try it for a couple of years because we know it takes some time. And uh, today, we have an amazing program. You know how big our hall is. This is just a little section. When we have our free intro nights, we have a hundred people often. Uh, we have to have two different Sicilian circles. Voice up. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, we often have two Sicilian circles and sometimes three. Uh, we have to move the tables out of the way. I, every time we have a free intro, I'm sitting there, Alice and I are sitting there at the front desk going, I wonder how many people show up and the lines start to form outside the door and it's like, oh my gosh, this is working. Um, so anyhow, it's, it's an exciting time for us. I do a lot of work for square dancing. A lot of Olympia people that are here in the audience do a lot of work for square dancing. Why do we do it? You know, I'm not getting any younger. I want to help other people live a full life and gosh, where else do you get exercise and socialization and um, you know, work your brain out. We have this amazing activity. It's done a lot for me in the past 47 years um, and I want to give back. And uh, the pictures just show some of our folks, the smiles are what make it for me and the aha when the light goes on of our dancers. So you've got a handout and you don't have to look at the small print a lot. I'm going to go over each of these steps. I'm going to spend most of the time on the first step, which is getting them in the door, because I figure that's where you guys are at. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about how you keep them and a little bit more about what happens afterwards till the new people are helping you get new people in the door? Because we know all of you don't have anybody else to 
you, all your friends already square dance or they don't want to hear about it anymore. So we need new people to come in the door so they bring their friends. <laughs> so the, one of the keys to our program is the free introduction to square dancing. Um, we start four times a year. At first, Jim, Jim thought we should start six times a year. And our angels were just burnt out. <laughs> so four times a year worked better for us. Um, and we advertise, we'll talk about that. We advertise a lot. And you can come to that free intro, which is basically lesson one. You can bring your friends the next week. That's, that is lesson one. And after that, no new people can come, but that's okay. You want to bring your friends, they can't come on Thursdays. You can start Mondays in just four weeks. So uh, there's lots of options. We publicize, let me see if I can get that. Oh, look at that. <laughs> um, we'll talk about a lot of these different things that we do. Um, yeah, I think all these things we're going to talk about. So I'll just go on to the next slide. So our Olympia schedule, you probably can't see this really great, but you can look at the slides online later, right? Uh, we start on Thursdays in September. We start on Mondays in October. Over November and December, we do lots of workshops. We teach pretty much vanilla, the, oh, so we teach basic the first hour and a, let's see, from 6.30 to 8. Um, and then we teach mainstream, the other, the moves that aren't covered in basic, from 8 to 9. So our new people are learning basic. The people that are learning mainstream come and help. And we teach pretty much the vanilla for the, the for those first 10 weeks. We had run 10 week sessions. And then when they're learning mainstream, they're also learning more, um, more of the extended applications is what we call it now. You may call it DVD. And so we're learning to, you know, how to do things half sashayed. And um, then in the workshops, they learn more of that. So everybody can do basic, and a lot of people take basic more than once. If, if you're having trouble and you know who those folks are, they can take basic several times. We have people that have taken basic for a year and don't take mainstream till the next year. Um, other people just zoom right through. The other cool thing is, if you take basic on Thursdays, you get to for free take it on Mondays four weeks later. So the people that need extra practice can do that. And we'll talk a little bit more. We have some other extra practice um, opportunities. So then again in January, we start basic again. The people from the fall are taken mainstream. We start again in, um, well, we start in January on Thursdays. We start in February on Mondays. Uh, we have a cleanup mainstream towards the end of the year, and we do workshops weekly all summer. We also have opportunities for people to dance basic at least once a month at a dance all year. Well, now twice a month, twice a month, um, all year round. So we support people. The more opportunities, the better. And the more opportunities to practice, the better is kind of our theory. So, how do we publicize? We handed out our cards, and I buy 5,000 cards a year. Um, and hopefully everybody in the audience that's from Olympia has some of this year's cards in their pocket. So, <laughs> um, Bob Knutson gave one to Christine Gregoire at the grocery store. <laughs> so. <laughs> You hand them out everywhere. If you're wearing those fluffy things to a restaurant, you ought to be handing out to the folks at the, um, that serve you and say, what are you doing? Um, I've got, I don't know, a bunch of the flyers. We have a flyer, and then we 
um, attach with blue tape so you can take them off um, the cards at the bottom. And I love going around town and going into different stores and seeing inches of blue tape because people have come taking them off. And um, we'll talk about all the different places, but definitely every library within about 100 miles has one of these <laughs> up. <laughs> um, and we have a place at the hall where people can show where they, um, where they put things up. And, and often they'll put the business card there. And so this is the All Roads Lead to Lacado. Um, this year we've got point, point them to Lacado, and Leanna made lots of little hands that point towards Lacado Hall. On, so, um, so people are accountable and they're like, oh, look where somebody did. I bet you I could go to Subway and put that up. So, and of course, doctors and dentists office are great. Um, your doctor wants you out exercising and socializing. So lots of opportunities. And um, these are from previous years. If you really want a copy, to, I'll have those available later. Anyhow, um, I have a list of about 500 people that have set foot in our hall. As Glenn says on the first night, you will never get off Nancy's list unless you send her an email and tell her to take you off. So everybody that walks through the door, I collect their email. Um, so I send, I'll start for, I send two months ahead of time, one month ahead of time, one week ahead of time, that one day before our lessons to all those people and say, and say either, come back to us, or I keep collections of people that for some reason have told us that they're interested, you know, come try it. Um, this is just a typical email I send to the folks that have done it before. This is a, I vary, so some of them are real short, what, where, when, some of them are longer and folksier. Different things appeal to different people. I don't put a lot of pictures in the emails because it tends to send them to spam a little bit more, but I try that sometimes too. Um, for the people that don't dance already, I try to highlight the reasons you might want to dance in the emails. And again, different, some of them, different fonts, different, I try different ways. Um, What's really worked well for us recently, and, and this is kind of new, is using social media. Um, you have your own Facebook sites, I hope. Um, we have two Facebook sites. We have one for dancers, and we have one for people that might be interested, because it's kind of confusing. Our dancer sites got lots of stuff. So we have another one that's just for new dancers, and it works okay. But um, and but what this is a key thing that it, we've just started more recently is we find local groups that people might look for to find places to go. And what I found out is if I Google events in Olympia or events in Lacey, or events in Tumwater. I try not to go to Chehalis and Centralia because other clubs, that's their area. But events in Fort Lewis or JBLM, I find a whole bunch of Facebook groups, and I join them, and I send them our posters. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we get people that way. Also, you may belong to Facebook groups for your church. Um, our neighborhood has a Facebook group, and they hear a lot about square dancing. When they see me out walking, they say, there's that square dancing lady. Um, <laughs> anyhow, find all the Facebook groups you can. We'll talk about the kind of posters we put on there. Another resource that's been really good for us is nextdoor.com. How many of you belong to nextdoor.com? Yeah. Um, it's by neighborhood, so we try to get a lot of people in Olympia to all post our stuff because it's different neighborhoods in Lacey and Tumwater. So 
we got people that way. Online calendars, almost every radio station has a long an online calendar. Some news sites have online calendars. We have Thurston Talk. Um, there's Lewis Talk, but I don't do that because you guys do that, right? Um, <laughs> there's um, Chamber of Commerce. So I have a checklist that I go through and send to all sorts of places. You need probably pictures to put on those too. Uh, we have a great website. Um, and you've got a link to it there. And that's, as you get more people, you get people with different areas of expertise. And the guy that built our website is kind of a famous internet guy. Um, and he like brought his family to square dancing and said, your website is not very good. I need to build you a new one. Okay. <laughs> um, we don't do Instagram and TikTok, but we'd like, we have a lot of young dancers now, and I think we can probably find someone that will volunteer to help us with that. Um, podcasts, some clubs use Meetup, but you, not, we don't, but, um, but you have to pay, and I haven't heard a lot of worthwhile. We've took people like Parents Without Partners. Uh, some people have suggested AA, because where else can you have a great time without drinking? So, <laughs> um, <laughs> anyhow, we post a lot of different things. There's a sample here. I found that samples, web, uh, Facebook things that where the people are already moving, and I'm not really good at sending those up, reels versus YouTubes versus... But the ones that are people are moving seem to attract more attention. But we, we do put videos on there. Some like the video I showed you at the front, some of our people vid square dancing. So there's some examples there you can see later. Um, so if you're going to have a poster to post up or put on the website or put on, send, send an email to put on Facebook, what does it need? date, time, location, who can you come, make sure you know that we're single friendly. We probably get more new singles um, than couples, I would say, definitely. Um, no experience necessary, it's okay if you have two left feet, especially if it's free, but also, I mean, we are cheap, lessons are cheap, so cost is a good thing to put. And then a few things about why you want to square dance. I'm, I have samples of what those are. Um, pictures are important. You want people to see themselves doing that. So I think I have something more about pictures. But so these, I must have every time I see a um, ad on Facebook. I copy it to my phone. My phone has probably a hundred different lesson ads on it. And these are some that kind of spoke to me. Um, I think I stole this one from someone in this room. Um, <laughs> anyhow, um, so uh, you want pictures, you want all ages, you don't want only fluffy skirts. Some fluffy shirts are good if you also have some people in prairie skirts and jeans. This is even better. Uh, well, I'll talk about it later. A lot of the pictures are available are only of senior people. And in Olympia, we try to target all ages, so we try to find pictures of all ages. Some other really good resources are in this room. Um, these are people I steal from, and there's probably other folks in Washington State that I don't know so well, these are nearby, but uh, Lane and Gail Johnson, who is now the state president, uh, have lots of really good ideas. Um, one of the things they do is all of Rainier Council start, does publicity together. They start at the same time. So you could conceivably go take lessons on Mondays one place, on Wednesdays another place, on Sundays another place. If you needed to practice a lot, 
you got that. Um, Lane, actually we both stole this from Don Wood, but Lane, like us, does walk-through reviews before the lessons start, and that's really good for folks that all that music and the speed is too much. They really find it comforting to have that, let's just walk through before the lessons start. Uh, Lane's also really good at having, picture, having posters with the moves we're going to teach this week. He has pretty ones. We have ones that we stick with the, just the names that we stick up on the front of the podium. But some people really need to see the words. That's the, how they learn. What is the name of that move where you take your right hand and then your left hand and you go around in a circle? If they see the words, then it kind of helps fall into their head. Um, Bob and Sheila Blackburn, I steal from also. Um, and they do some great things in Kitsap. They, a booth at the county fair, they have some big turnouts for their free intros. They call them something else probably. They're square dance parties. Um, they again do things Kitsap wide. Sheila has some wonderful newsletters she sends out to students that are much more polished than the ones I send out to students. Uh, so lots of people you can steal from. Radio talk shows, actually, we need to get, there's Dick Poost in um, Olympia has a radio talk show, and we need to get on his schedule right away. Um, demos, the first thing people think about when they think about publicity is demos. Glenn and I have been doing those for 47 years. Uh, we think it's not the best way to get new dancers, but it's a great way to get people aware that there's square dancing in the community. Uh, in the 20 some years I've been in Olympia, we've gotten one dancer from demos that I remember, but she brought her whole family and her whole, whole homeschool community. So that was like a big win. Uh, and her parents are still dancing today, and it's been, I don't know, she was a little kid and now she's grown up and getting married. Um, anyhow, so demos are great and they're a fun thing to do. If I was going to put all my energy to one thing, it wouldn't necessarily be demos. Um, people put signs in car windows. I don't do this, but at Color Lab, they taught, and at the Nationals this year, they talked about there's some places where there's big intersections, and they put the out signs for just one weekend. They take them, put them all out. They take them all in. Um, and I can't remember, Minneapolis or wherever it is, um, they have really good success. I'm not sure that work in Thurston County were more scattered. There's not intersections that everybody goes through. But anyhow, homeschoolers, and I bet you all of you have some homeschoolers in your club. Uh, what a great resource. So if you can tap into that community, there used to be Yahoo groups for homeschoolers, and now that doesn't work for me very much anymore, hardly anybody. But we need to find ways to tap into that uh, because those are families you really want in your program and they bring their friends. Uh, so resources, I'm not gonna go over all of these, but this is all online and the, the links work. Um, but Square Dance Tech is the one I want to talk about, especially the video I showed at the beginning is from them. Like I said, you send them a message, it's right online, say, I want this one, this one, and this one, and here's the information I want on that last slide, and Ray will make them and get them back to you in like a day. It's amazing resource. He also has pages and pages and pages of Square Dance pictures of couples or whatever that are AI generated so they're not real people so you don't have to worry about copyright laws. Um, so it's a wonderful resource. So be sure and look at that. Color Lab has a manual that's super. Uh, Color Lab has a website, Live Lively Square Dance. People can put in where they live and what they'll find if they go to Washington is they'll find, they'll go to the state site and then they can find a club or whatever that way. Um, there's webinars on publicity at USDA. You can see 
I keep a publicity document for Olympia that just says, here's what we need help with. Does anybody want to talk to Dick Poost about putting somebody on the radio? Um, so it, it's kind of a in process, our document, but you can take a look at it. I steal memes and flyers from everybody, and I get them, especially on Facebook group, Square Dance Flyers, memes for square dancing. World Twirl is a club in Florida that puts out like two or three memes a week. Uh, so it's a great resource. Here's our Olympia website if you want to take a look at it. If you want to get cards like this, Vistaprint is the, the, the biggest printing group, but also I use Gotprint, it's a little cheaper, and get on their uh, mailing list and they'll give you free deals. Vistaprint has 30% off if you buy three, um, buy three different products today. Uh, Gotprint is going to give me 10% off because it's my anniversary month. <laughs> Um, people that come to our hall always want to know where we get our student badges. I get them from um, namesbadges.com. The nice thing about these is they only cost about a couple dollars each, and then I buy the. Um, and a lot of you have student badges with your club's name on it. We are Olympia area square dancing, and so we have to get special ones that's just for all Olympia, because all the clubs are part of that. And the nice thing is these peel off. I buy the special, special back labels that, have, that, are, that peel off easily, so we reuse them. I've, uh, we've got 100, and we use most of them. <laughs> and so even how we display those is, is a, a big um, issue at our hall. <laughs> um, and there's a couple examples of the, the, the customized videos there that you can look at if you look at the slideshow. So we have a hundred people, well, we probably only have 50 new people that show up for lessons. I, I think 43 is about the, the biggest number of brand new people. Also a lot of people that were out for a while come back, but what do you do then? We, they're coming just, for, we don't advertise, well, we do say in small print, yes, we have lessons, but we want them to just come for the free try it. And uh, we get all walks of life, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> those of you from Olympia know, we get some interesting folks that show up for the free lessons. Um, but how do you get them to come and stay? We're very welcome. We have, a great group of angels, and um, you know we'll often have 50 or 60 angels there. So um, we're welcoming. Uh, latecomers are a problem, but we get them in with somebody good. Uh, we start in Sicilian circles, which seems a little easier, and then we move into squares. Um, the dancers are really good at talking to them at the breaks. We make sure people are successful. Um, because we advertise free and we advertise in a lot of papers and things, we'll get people with their caretakers, developmentally disabled people, or, um, and we make sure that their things are working out okay for them. We may need to tell them, you probably can't make it through lessons, but we make sure that they have a good time at that first time. Um, we start talking to them through the course of the night about, gee, if you square dance, you can do it anywhere in the world. It's only 10 weeks and you can learn the basics of square dancing. Uh, we start this same time next week. And for only $60 for 10 lessons or $6 a night, you can be part of this. Um, help them get that picture in their head. At Lakota, we don't want finances to be a problem for anyone. Um, that's why we, you can come for the second night in the same week for free, but we also have scholarships available. So if it's a problem, we try to get people to pay half, um, though there's sometimes people that we give a full scholarship, we have a little form and you can write what, why you need it. Um, we don't check, uh, but 
we want to be an opening place. We started the scholarship program. We had a dancer dance one night and passed away the next morning suddenly. And um, we started the scholarship fund because people wanted to do something. And now people continue to um, give money to the scholarship fund. And so we have that, and um, it works out really nice. After we collect their um, emails, and after the free intro, they get an email right away that tells them, um, you know, please come back next week, bring your friends. And we talk about that a lot. You know. um, and yeah, because the second week, they can still repeat lesson one. If your publicity has been very successful, you will find that you get kind of a diverse crowd. We have seen more interesting tattoos and um, people of indeterminate gender. Um, <laughs> and that, of course, that's kind of Olympia too. But that means you're doing a really good job. And we are welcoming to everybody. So at, when they come in, they get the facts about the lessons. Um, a sheet, and then here's a sample of the email. It's actually, I shortened it a little bit from what they get. It's all the information they might want to need about coming in again. So hopefully the next week, you won't keep them all. There's people that think that this is like the Tractor Tavern Square Dance and have pre-partied a little and come all dressed up. Uh, there's people that have different ideas of what it's going to be, and they won't all come back. And we have a lot of people that bring their out-of-town friends to the free intro. Um, but hopefully about half of them will show back up the next week, and a number of them will be bringing their friends. Um, we like people to pay in advance, but you know it's totally optional. But since we charge $6, change is a big issue. so. It's actually helped with more people paying in advance since we went from $5 to $6 a lesson. Uh, but they're more likely to stay in if they paid for 10 lessons, so <laughs> it's a good deal. Um, we have lots of friendly angels. If you look on our website, we have some guidelines for angels. And um, we try to help people know good dancers don't talk in squares. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And you know, we talk about gentle touches and um, hand signals, but mostly the dancers just need to smile and let people know they're welcome and that mistakes are okay. And we're happy you're here. Uh, we take photos of all the new folks so the callers can say you instead of you in the green shirt. Um, <laughs> oh. Though when you have. 40 new dancers, they still set you in the green shirt. Um, but it helps us at the front desk, too. Uh, we have their nice name badges. The important thing is people have fun. They need to have a success experience. They don't need to have a square that breaks down every couple tips because they will not be back next week. Um, to do that, in Olympia, we m move people. If there's a square having problems and another square full of angels, we will yep. take them and move them over there. Not everybody's good at that. Alice is really good, and I'm really good. John could do it, but he's not assertive enough to <laughs> want to move people, but he can tell me who should be moved. Um, and the callers say, you know, we're going to move people. That's not because you're bad. And I usually don't move the worst person in the square. I usually move in other couples. Um, and they're just used to that because we do it from the very beginning. There's other ways to do that. Callers, you know, Jim Hattrick was a master at this. Um, have everybody facing out of the square say, point to the person across from you and pass through with them? Everybody else? do a partner trade, you got new squares. The problem we had, Alice and I had with Jim is when you've got 10 or 12 squares, you fix the one that was having problems and you make a new one. But <laughs> it's still, he just keep doing it till things worked out okay. Um, and that works good. 
Uh, the square rotation, Vic Cedar's square rotation program, or cards is another good way to mix people up. We use square rotation program at Plus in a Week, and it really helps because you get to dance with other people. And if there's two people that should never be in the same square, you can set that up in the program, and when it randomizes, that'll never happen. <laughs> so, um, uh, we have the walkthrough before. Um, Mark over here often does that walkthrough, so Glenn is getting older and it doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't like to call from six to nine <laughs> without a break. <laughs> Anyhow, um, Mark also on Thursdays does a slower paced review. Um, so people that want to find the square dancing is just oh too fast, they can come to that. And there's some people that only come to that. Um, some of our dancers, there's a lady that's probably 90-something that really doesn't drive at night anymore and um, really can't keep up, but she comes to Mark's review. Uh, Bob Knutson, where are you? Uh, Bob used to do something at the Senior Center, a slower pace thing, and it was wonderful. And sometimes the people that couldn't keep up at lessons, we would send that way. And then we weren't just saying, you can't dance at all. We're saying, you know, there's a place that would probably be better for you. Uh, some people, I'll say this right now, there's some people that just can't keep up even though we give them extra opportunities and sooner or later the caller or I have to say, you know, maybe line dancing would be better for you. Um, <laughs> just because it takes seven, we can keep them dancing, but it takes seven angels for that one person and that really is hard on the other dancers um, because those angels can't be in their squares. And that's sad but true, and it happens because we have hundreds of people come through our door every year. It, you know, it, it does happen, and, and a lot of those people do come with their caretakers, and we can tell our caretaker, you know, we're glad you came out, but you need to go bowling. Um, it's really great that they can attend the other night that, for free. We send the messages every week, and I'll show you a sample. We use the videos a lot, and I'll show you a sample of what we give them for that. And our students use the videos. They watch them. Um, newsletters, reminders. If people miss, you've got to reach out to them. And, and, you know, we have so many options. Oh, you missed last week. Come to the early review. Go to Mark's Thursday. Um, Watch the videos, here's the ones you missed. And, oh, you sprained your ankle, you're going on vacation. Why don't you come to our lessons that start in four weeks? You've already gotten started this far. So I send them an email a couple days after each lesson. It tells you what we learned last week, what we're going to learn next week tells you what dances we have, student level dances, talks about other things about square dancing. Um, our online videos, Randy, are you here? Yeah, Randy made this wonderful <laughs> thing that we have used now for years when he was learning. And um, this is the front page. It explains how to work it and then in our lesson order, every move, you can either see the whole lesson on square dance videos or you can go right to where it says, see the one that says 19? I can use my pointer. Um, if you click on that link, it takes you right to that move. So, um, our, uh, like I said, some of our students watch those videos hundreds of times. And some of them it doesn't work for at all. They say, I gotta do it. But we try to think of all the different learning styles people might have. So, you've got them there. They're, they finished dancing. They finished. Um, they took basic once or twice or three times and maybe took mainstream too. How do you keep them dancing? Lots of opportunities. People, it's amazing how just reaching out to someone 
uh, will make them go, oh yeah, because it's easy to get busy in life and you know, you miss one week, you miss two weeks and then you're like, oh, I'll do that again later sometime and if somebody reaches out to you personally, if you send an email to someone, I, I do a lot of work by email, phone is great too, but I'm not a phoner. Um, if you send an email to somebody, put their name in the subject line, you know, Roger, we missed you last week. Because they get lots of emails. Something that just says square dance lessons, they're like, oh, it's another one of Nancy's. They get a lot of emails from me. If they see their name, they're more likely to read it. Um, so our Facebook, um, we try not to clutter up the site, but we try to tell people what's going on, and you'll see some samples. Um, help them, especially when they graduate, to think about what are the next steps they need to keep, you know, the first message is you finish lessons, the most important thing is to keep dancing. Um, we send, I send weekly summaries of what's up, what's coming up um, to everybody. I got another 400 people I send messages to. So I get kicked off um, my email, I had to change email accounts because they, they, they thought I was a spammer because I do send 800 messages <laughs> uh, when lessons are starting. Um, <laughs> help make sure everybody succeeds, to have our dancers call to the floor. You don't want squares breaking down. People will not come back if they're in three squares in a row that break down. You won't see them again. Um, our summer workshops, I can't tell you the difference to how well people dance at the beginning of the summer and the end of the summer. It really helps a lot. Um, our dancers in Olympia are great at finding a couple that's having a little bit of problems and saying, come dance with us. I tell you what, why don't I dance with your husband and <laughs> you dance with me? Um, help them steer them to better squares. The good dancers dance in the front. Go dance with them. Don't cluster in the back of the hall all the new dancers. Uh, <laughs> um, they c Angels dance for free at lessons. Six dollars um, makes a difference for some people. So if you just finish, gosh, and we let you angel as soon as you graduated. Um, come on out and it's helping you too. <laughs> um, I do send a weekly message. I started during COVID just to keep the square dance community together and there's a sample of, except that was a shorter than, it's a long message. Um, we send reminders before our, put them on Facebook. I collect square dance memes and this is just samples of some of the reminders. Um, do you like my smiling dancers? Um, we have a lot of dancers from Evergreen State College right now, and they started a square dance club there. Um, they found us on Facebook. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so I try to highlight different. There's a couple more of our Evergreen students. <laughs> at, <laughs> that was at our hat stance. But anyhow, we try to just have a lot of different things. So part five, how am I doing on time? I'm, I'm on schedule. Amazing but true. Um, so the last part in that circle of cycle is keep the program going. Help your new dancers feel included, have social events. I don't think we're particularly better. We're probably worse than a lot of people at this in, in Olympia, but we try and we, and we keep on trying. Um, help people to join a club. This is an issue in Olympia because we have two mainstream clubs. We have a non-recruiting zone during lessons. Um, we don't, clubs can tell people about how great square dancing is, but they don't recruit dancers until they graduate. Then they kind of, we have a little feeding frenzy. Um, <laughs> um, and, and, and that can be a little uncomfortable for the students, so I try to prepare them ahead of time. You know, you're going to get a lot of clubs giving you free <laughs> passes to their dances. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of our students join both clubs, and they end up having 
more of a loyalty to the activity and to the Olympia area than to a specific club, which I think is great. Um, uh, lots of communication. We use Facebook, email, newsletters. Um, keep things fun. Get them to Angel. And we do a lot of appreciation for our angels. You'll see Olympia dancers with a little angel dangle. They get that. Um, we have an angel appreciation dance every year. Don't make them the club president right after they graduate. <laughs> <laughs> Don't overwhelm them. Let them. It, it's kind of like a starter drug. You need to. <laughs> you need to get them. Give them a job. Keep, keep them interested. And then, after a couple years, when they're hooked, then make them the club president. <laughs> um, don't let them fade away. Keep on checking on people. Invite them back. Um, make sure we publicize. We get a lot of ex-dancers coming to Olympia. We have a lot of people from, that move from California to Olympia to retire because it's such a lovely place and they can sell their house for big bucks and buy a mansion in Olympia, right? Because you came from California. Um, anyhow, the more you advertise, the more people come back. And we have people that took lessons 13 years ago that show back up. The wonderful thing about our angels is we don't just have mainstream angels. We have advanced and challenged dancers and plus dancers. And what we're doing is feeding, I always say, a rising tide lifts all boats. The round dancers benefit because we have so many people coming in the door. Um, I think this year we graduated 60 dancers. Um, and we have a number of others that are still at basic. Um, you know, it was a good year. And I, it works for everybody. So what happens then? We start all over. It takes a couple years to get going. But then you have, and I look around here today, there are lots of people that have taken lessons not that long ago that are here now. and. Um, are doing vital things. We have new folks that have helped with our sound system. Um, just at the end of my lesson, I usually put you know things that we could do. I said I needed somebody to ba to back up video. I um, at state, so five different people brought their video equipment here to back up in case Steve got stuck in traffic <laughs> or <laughs> there was a malfunction. Um, so. It's just a wonderful thing. So key points. It takes a lot of people, and different people have different skills. I'm really good at organization. I am really good with spreadsheets. I know. This is my last slide. <laughs> you have somebody to tell you when your time is going. <laughs> uh, people have different skills and different times in their lives. I didn't come to lessons for all the years my son was growing up. Now I have a time in my life where I should quit working for my job that pays. Um, but <laughs> you know, this is a time in my life when I have time to do this. And there are people with so many skills that just pop up when you need help. I think if you have a vision of what you want to build and start telling people, it's amazing who will come come up and say, well, you know, I have an extra TV that you can use to run the square rotation program in the hall. If you tell people what you need, it's amazing. Or if you have a vision of what, what you have, um, it's amazing what will show up. Um, we try lots of things. Some of them work better than others. But we keep trying. We started with eight weeks to teach basic. It was a struggle. 10 weeks works really good to teach basic, especially if they can take it again if they need to. Um, make sure everybody's involved. It takes a few years. If you try it for one session and it doesn't work and give up, that's probably not going to work. 
But boy, once you get the ball rolling, and we were scared after COVID. We lost a lot of dancers, like a lot of you. Um, but it's amazing, we're back and strong now. Um, so I think, yeah, that's my last slide. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.